I am a beautiful young woman, a virgin having known no man. We lived in Mesopotamia in the land of Nahor. Nahor and Milka were my grandparents. My father was Bethuel. On one beautiful evening, I went to draw water from the well with my water jar on the shoulder. I went down the spring, filled my jar with water and started back home. A man I was not familiar with ran towards me and asked me for uh, water to drink. I quickly let down my jar and gave the man water to drink. When the man had quenched his thirst, I offered to water his camels until they got their fill. I emptied my jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water. I drew water for all the camels. All the while, the man uh, with the camels gazed on me without saying a word. He then took a gold ring weighing 5.5 grams and two bracelets for my hand weighing 110 grams. He then asked me whose daughter I was and if I, there was a room in my father's house to spend the night. I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milka, whom she bought to Nahor. I replied, we have plenty of both straw and fodder and room for you to spend the night. I also added, this man then bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. He said, blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and faithfulness towards my master. He also continued to say, as for me, the Lord has led me in the way to the house of my master's kinsmen. I immediately ran and told my mother's household about these things. I had a brother, Laban. As soon as he saw the ring and the bracelets on my arms and heard the words the man spoke to me, he ran towards the man to the spring. This man was standing by the camels and the spring. At the spring, Laban said to the man, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came to our house and harnessed the camels and gave straw and fodder to the camels. And there was water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. We set food before the man and his entourage to eat. But the man told us he would not eat until he said what he needed to say. He was allowed to speak. He told us that he was Abraham's servant, my other grandfather. He also told us how the Lord had blessed Abraham and made him great and gave him flocks, herds, silver, gold, male servants, female servants, camels, and donkeys. He then narrated how Abraham's wife, my grandmother Sarah, bore to his master Abraham a son when he was old and this son had, had been inherited all that Abraham has. That was not all. He continued to share how his master Abraham made him swear that he would not take a wife for his son amongst the daughters of Canaanites. That was where they lived. They lived amongst the Canaanites. He made him swear instead that he would go to his master Abraham, his father's house and his clan and get a wife for his son there. There's more to this. This man asked his master Abraham what if uh, the woman would not follow him back. And his master Abraham said to him, the Lord before whom he had walked would send his angel with a servant and prosper his way. His master told him he should only take away for his son from the master's clan, from the master's father's house. His master Abraham told him that he was free from this oath if he got to the master's clan and they refused to give their daughter to the servant. Oh my, this guest had much more to say. He proceeded to tell us that he got to the spring on the day and talked to God, the God of his master Abraham. And these were the words that he actually told God. Oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you're prospering the way that I go, behold, I'm standing at the spring of water. Let the virgin who comes out to draw water, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, 
drink and I will draw from for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Goosebumps. There was still more. The servant continued, now with an amazed look, to tell us that before he finished speaking in his heart, behold, I came out with my jar on my shoulders, went down to the spring and drew water. Then the servant recounted how he asked me for a drink and I quickly let down my jar from my shoulders and gave him to drink and told him that I would also give his camels drink too. So he drank water and his camels also drank. This all sounded so divinely planned. It was quite shocking and amazing to hear this man narrate his day's event to us all. Sit back, there's more. The servant then continued to elaborate how he asked me whose daughter I was. And I answered, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, who milk a bow to him. So he put uh, on my nose and uh, the, the ring on my nose and the bracelets on my arms. And he then bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of his master Abraham, who had led him by the right way to take the daughter of his master's kinsman for his son. Then he popped the life-changing question of, on behalf of the master. He asked that if we were going to show steadfast love and faithfulness to his master, we should let him know what we had decided, but if not, we should allow him to turn to the right hand or to the left. Wow! My brother Laban and father Bethuel told the servant that all this had come from the Lord and they could neither speak bad nor good. They told the servant that he could take me to be the wife of his master's son as the Lord had spoken. When the servant heard this words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord. Next thing he did was bring out jewelry of silver and gold and garments and gave them to me. He also gave to my mother and brother costly ornaments. Then he and the men with him ate and drank and spent the night. Early next morning, the servant arose and asked to be sent back to his master. My brother and mother asked him to let me stay for at least 10 days, then go. But the servant told them not to delay him since the Lord had prospered his way. So they called me and asked me if I would go with the servant. I said yes. My family gave me a nurse to go with me and then blessed me with these powerful words that I would become thousands and tens of thousands and that my offsprings would possess the gates of those who hate them. All the young women given to accompany me and I rode away with uh, Abraham's servant. When we got to, the, to a field in Negeb, I saw a man and dismounted from the camel. I asked the servant who the man was, and he told me it was his master Isaac. I took my veil and covered myself. The servant narrated his journey to his master Isaac. Then Isaac took me to the tent of his mother Sarah, and I became his wife and he loved me. My husband was 40 years old when he took me, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean, to be his wife. About 20 years later, my husband prayed to God for me because I was barren, and the Lord granted his prayers. I conceived. The children struggled together within me, and I just thought, if it is this, why is this happening to me? So I went to inquire of the Lord and he answered me. The Lord told me that two nations were in my womb and two people from within me would be divided. The one would be stronger than the other and the older would serve the younger. When I was due for delivery, astoundingly, there were twins in my womb. The first one came out red, all his body like a hairy clock. So we called him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. My husband was 60 years old when our children were born. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in the tents. 
My husband loved Esau because he ate of his game, and I loved Jacob. Now, there was a time when we had famine in the land, and God directed us, and as he directed us, we went to Gerar, to Abimelech, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. The men in this land asked my husband who I was. Because I was very attractive, my husband said I was his sister because he feared they would kill him and take me in. He said I was his wife. When he had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out and saw my husband and I laughing in an intimate way. He immediately called my husband and admonished him because I was his wife, yet he said I was his sister. He explained he thought he would be killed for me if he acknowledged I was his wife. Abimelech warned that none of the men, that one of the men would have easily slept with me and brought guilt upon their land. After he ordered that anyone who would touch my husband or I would be put to death. Later on, when my husband was old and his eyes were dim, so he could not see. I overheard a conversation he had with my elder son, Esau. When Esau went out, I told my son Jacob, I had your father speak to your brother Esau these words. Bring me game and prepare for me delicious food that I may eat and bless you before the Lord, before I die. So I told Jacob to obey what I commanded him. Go to the flock and bring me two good young goats so that I may prepare from them delicious food for your father, such as he loves. And you, Jacob, shall bring it to your father to eat, so that he may bless you before he dies. But Jacob said to me, Behold, my brother is a hairy man, and I am smooth man. Perhaps my father will fill me, and I shall seem to be mocking him, and bring a curse upon myself, and not a blessing. I answered him, and said, let your curse be on me, my son, only obey my voice and go bring them to me. So Jacob went and took the goods and brought them to me. I prepared delicious food such as his father loved. Then I took the best garments of Esau, my son, which were with me in the house, and put them on Jacob, my younger son. I took the skin of the young goats and put them on the hands and the smooth parts of Jacob's neck. Then I put the delicious food and bread that I had prepared into the hand of my son Jacob. He went to his father. Jacob did get the blessing meant for his brother, but now Esau, my son, hated Jacob for the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, the days of mourning my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. These words reached me. I sent and called Jacob the younger son and told him, Behold, your brother Esau comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to Laban, my brother in Haran, and stay with him a while until your brother's fury turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him, then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereft, be bereft of you both in one day? Then I said to my husband Isaac, I loathe my life because of the Hittite women. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women like this, one of the women in the land, what good will my life be to me? My husband called Jacob and blessed him and told him, not to take a wife from the Canaanite women. Instead, he should go back to his mother's father and take a wife from there, one of Laban's daughters, his mother's brother, I. He blessed Jacob and Jacob left. My name is Rebecca and this is my story with a sudden end. So, if you're wondering, so what happened to Rebecca after this? The only account then we have, one of the only accounts 
is that Rebecca was buried with her husband Isaac in the same place where Abraham and, and Sarah were, were, were buried. So we don't get to hear any more of the story and it just ends like that abruptly. And thank you so much for following through the series. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's just amazing to, to read and see through the eyes of God and through the eyes of women, the women in the Bible. And just to see the love and the grace of God that works in us, even when we just keep doing things our own way. And we just get to see the love of God that calls us to him. I mean, the, the main aim of this is not for us to glorify the women or the things they did, but it's for us to start seeing God the way he sees us and to bask in his love and glory. So thank you so much. Watch out for the next one. It just gets more and more dramatic, detailed and all because now on earth people are increasing and, you know, the heart of a man is desperately wicked. And um, I hope you had an amazing International Women's Day. This comes at a time when we are celebrating International Women's Day. So I hope you really had a good one and that whatever it is you might be going through, whatever season, I pray that um, you put your heart and your trust in God. And if you're there and you're a lady and you don't know God, God the Father, the author and finisher of our faith, I pray that you may ask him to reveal himself to you. That's what I see him doing as I look at the servant that Abraham sent. He went there in the faith of his master. And then God reveals himself to him also and he he's the one who now bows down and worships this God. So just ask God to reveal himself to you and open your heart to what he will show you, what he will teach you, what he, he will direct you to do. For the glory of his name, in Jesus' name. Lovely, lovely time. God bless you. God bless you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you.